RC Maintenance with your host, Han Dash. And as you're probably aware, this channel does cover a wide area of topics such as video game walkthroughs, how-to videos about Minecraft and RC vehicles, whether that be Nitro, Electric, 1-8 Buggy, 1-5, Gasoline, anything. And as always, this channel here is dedicated to the fans that make Honda Dash Productions possible. Okay, this episode is going to be covering the shocks and the oil that goes in them and how to clean them and properly maintain them. And we all know that the shocks and springs are a vital part of, of the RC vehicle. Uh, the oil in the shocks give the, um, the vehicle more stability over rough terrain. Um, without this oil, the shocks will compress and rebound too quickly and will fail to absorb or dampen the bumps in the road. So when you feel like your, your shock absorbers are performing properly, well, you should really check the fluid level and you know add more to the shocks, which we'll be showing you how to do. Okay, now I've come to the part where I'm gonna be showing the different supplies that we're gonna need to do this. Now, first thing you're gonna need to do is choose your shock oil. Now, like I said before, I like to use 70 in the back and 40 to 45 weight in the front. Now, I used to do it with uh, the opposite, actually. I used to use 70 in the front and 45 in the rear. Then I come to find out that that caused different types of performance issues and had trouble churning and just other things, to say the least. Not to mention jumping it uh, made it extremely uh, front heavy. So it had a tendency to almost flip over when it landed. So anyway, like I said, choose the different type you need. And you can buy it at any hobby store, generally. And they usually come in about one to two ounce bottles. And they're sh sold as shock oil or shock dampener oil. And there are many brands, such as Trinity and AE. So also what we're going to be needing to use is you know, Nina those pliers and backup pliers in case you know your shock is the chop top is really really on there you're going to need to have two sets of pliers in order to do that now i have here if you notice that i have two different toothbrushes now one's a heavy bristle toothbrush and one's a light bristle and that is for those people that have the time to take to actually when they take the shock off is to clean the entire thing now as you know when you're using it in dirt or mud or anything like that things tend to get dirty. And I mean dirty, they usually get, get up inside and under the boot and un, all around the inside, actually get, getting into the oil at some point. So if you have the time to take, you're gonna need to use two brushes to get in those fine spots like the threads below and under the boot part and above the, the piston shaft. You're gonna need some kind of bowl of some kind. You can use, it doesn't matter, whatever, to catch, to catch the fluid, the, the dirty oil coming out I like to use rubber gloves um, to keep my hands uh, good and keep traction on my hands because things tend to slip, especially tools. So let's get to the part where I'm going to show you how to dismantle your shocks by taking them off the towers itself, the strut towers. Let's get to that. Okay, now we come to the first step in taking our shocks off. Now, as I have the camera angled here, you can see by I, have, I don't have any of my back wheels on. Now, that makes it easier to get to. Now, like I said before, there are two ways of getting your shocks off. Now, there's one that's less invasive, and there's one that's just pretty invasive, but we're way quicker. Now, it's not, I don't know if it's a proven fact or not. I'm not sure about the facts, about, about the second way, but as we come to that, I'll tell you. The first way is to actually take an Allen wrench, which is about a 2.5 millimeter, and I'm using uh, an Optima Hyper SS cage, like I said before, and everything's kind of millimeters, so you could use a Torx or you can, you can use a, an Allen. It doesn't matter. My opinion is that Torx doesn't strip, strip the screws as much. But if you want to get to this thing here, you want to use a what's known as a ball Allen wrench, a ball head. And then it's able to get at the tougher angles that are right there positioned. Now we'll get to the second way. Now, using a screwdriver, preferably a flathead, something that's kind of big and it's got a nice amount of torque to it. You can there's, there's many ways you can do this, but my method is to do the flathead. Simple, easy. Now what we're gonna be doing, is we're gonna be taking the flathead, putting it in here, and then we're gonna be putting, and popping it off, just like that. See how simple that was? Real simple. Now, I know I forgot to mention too, to take off your rear wing, because it gets in the way, and it's extremely simple to do. Just take it, Allen or Hex, you know, and just pop these out, pop your wing off, you a lot more room to work with here, and 
like I said, now that you pop this off, if you want to adjust your height and you don't have the tools to get in because of this cooling head that's in the way, you can actually just get it off from this direction right here. There's, there's a head right there. Now let's pop off the other one. Okay, now got that done, and those are popped off. Okay, now that we've removed the top of this shocks here from the tower, and we're removing the screws that are underneath here, and what we're we'll using is that we're going to be using a 2.5 millimeter hex or Torx. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be moving that. Okay, so we're removing the rest of this here. As you remove it, you're going to notice it's a pretty, pretty hefty long screw. So if you have your paper towel next to you or something like a your cup, something small, take your screw and just put it on, off to the side and make sure that you don't lose that. Okay, now that I've taken off both screws on both sides of the car, so what you want to do is they're going to be pretty tough and you don't want to tug on this, you don't want to pull on any of this stuff here, and you don't want to damage the shocks, you know, at all. Because I like to take just a tiny, you know, it doesn't matter what it is, it could be a fly head, it could be, uh, it could be a Phillips head, anything like that, but what you want to do is you want to stick it in the side right here and just pop this thing out. Just pop it right out of the socket. Just get in there and wedge it and use leverage to kind of pop it out. Because that bearing there, or the ball bearing there is just pretty tough. There you go. You should just pop right out. There we go. And it's out. And that's how you remove your shocks. So as far as step one is concerned, We'll be done with that. Okay, now that we've taken away our car and we've cleared out an area here, kind of nice clean area to work with here, um, just be expected that it's going to be dirty because if you've used your car, like I hope you should have using your car, you're going to have a lot of dirt build up inside the inside the uh, shock area here, especially the top of it here. First thing you need to do is you're going to need to take your screwdriver here, let it be needs to be a little tiny head on there and then a little thin, little skinny like the one I used to pop off the actual shock with. What we're going to do is we're going to take the spring here that's, that goes around here. Now there's a ring. There's actually like a, I guess you'd call it uh, a washer. I mean, you kind of call it a washer, but it's a piece of plastic. What it does, it keeps this cap on there here. It keeps it pinched together. So what we're going to do is you take the spring with your fingers, pull back the spring here. There's a little lip right there. Now you pull that lip, right? And then the rings, the whole thing's just gonna pop off. Just kind of go around the edges here and pull and pull that lip of that little washer ring off. Put it on and around. Once that's down and off, just like that. Now, what you wanna do is you just wanna take this. There should be a gap right here. Now, now you gotta be, you gotta keep compressing the spring down because it's just gonna shoot off once you get the little boot off here. What you need to do is you need to pull it down, pull this boot thing down, and then out. It should pop right off, just like that. Now set it aside somewhere close to you, and then now the spring. Make sure you do not do not lose this part right here. Okay, you cannot lose that part. Now, let's put that right next to the other place. Right, before I mention, if you're gonna do this, to clean it. So have something to put your parts into. Just drop it in there, drop your parts in, set that aside, and then I'll use that to take it to the sink. Now, second part, spring here, needs to pop right off. So you just come right off. Your spring needs to come, there you go, just pop right off the boot. Put that in the little thing there. Okay, so you wanna do is we're gonna begin, you wanna get your drain pan ready, whatever you're gonna be using. Tupperware works the best. It's often easier to clean than anything else. And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your tool tools. I have my multi-tool here I'm going to be using. And then I have this thing here. And I like about this thing here is that you can adjust it to where it'll kind of grab bigger objects, which is will come in really handy when gripping the outside edge of this area right here. So what we're going to be doing is we're taking the multi-tool and I'm going to be gripping the inside portion here and this is kind of tricky you want to be careful not to squeeze not to careful not to squeeze too hard and damage the threads 
Now, what I'm doing here is, generally if I'm grabbing with my left hand, if you're grabbing with your left hand and you have a tool like this, what you want to do is you want to take the other tool here and you want to put it around the edge, this, the cap, the cap area right here. Now what you do is you wrap it around here and generally what you want to do is you want to twist it towards you. So you twist it this way. And all it should do is it should just twist, it should just keep twisting it until you put in just gently a lot of pressure, just gently pressure on it here. Like I said, now you can feel it loosen, you can feel it loose. So put your tools to your side here and then release this there. And then put your tool towards this side here. Twist the cap gently, okay, like this. Just twist it. You make sure you have it at an upright angle. Now, when you be careful when you're pulling this off, and because there's a bladder, like a ball, I guess we can call it a bladder, at the very top of the cap, and um, you don't want to lose that. It'll, cause it'll pop out. So what happens is, see, I'm gonna pop this out. The cap is, this is really simply a cap there. And you also have the bladder on top. So what you wanna do is wanna pop it out, pop out the bladder. And you can either pop out the bladder and pop it in your little thing, or you're just gonna put it like that in your cap. And generally what I like to do is I like just to pop, put it to the side, where, preferably where there's no dirt at all. And just put it on the ground now, just dump out your stuff there. Now, as you can tell here, my mine is relatively clean. As you can tell, I like to use the clear, clear Tupperware because it kind of shows you what, how dirty or how clean it really is. So, now when you're doing this, you want to take the piston rod here, the rod, and you want to just kind of caress that stuff out of there and just pump it down. You hear that squeak there. And just kind of drain it out. Put this off to the side. Um, and you can kind of tell, I'm looking at it now actually, and it's kind of cloudy, so it's kind of getting on the verge of getting dirty. What, but actually, but looking at this, how clear it is, it's actually a good sign for me anyway. Because that means that there's nothing wrong with my shocks, there's no contamination, there's nothing broken, and nothing getting through. So now that we got that going on, I'll show you a little side project here, something if you're really interested in doing it, is a, is a boot right here. It's a plastic boot, and it's actually a protective boot that protects stuff from getting up inside here. And what you want to do is there's, there's plastic around here, rubber, and inside underneath here is a rubber seal as well. And that protects things. What you can do is you can just pop that, pull this thing down, just like that. Now pull it down. You can see it exposes the rod itself and um, how dirty mine kind of is there. Now just take your, take your toothbrush and just get it. Just get all that crap out of there. Mostly all shocks, there's actually pistons inside here. And if you look inside here, I'm trying to a view of inside of my shock there um, but mine actually has holes where the pistons come up and then where the pistons come up there that means where the more holes there are and some come in three some come in four some come in five in my case mine is actually five and that means that when the pistons when the, when the rod comes up here when it comes out in that means that there's the fluid and the oil can come push through easier and so it makes it so it comes easier up and down. So, like I said, you want to get there and push the, you know, push it up and down. And you can hear it kind of coming out. And we'll do it nice and slow. Get all the, get all of it, all of it out of there. I'm gonna let mine sit upside down. And then it's gonna, I have a, I have a pad here to absorb it, so it'll be able to absorb better. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on this one. I'm gonna get this top off here, and then. Um, start draining that one. Okay, so the final part is coming up here. We're gonna be filling the shocks, of course, and what we need to be doing here is, um, side note is, <laughs> it makes me kind of laugh that they sell, stores sell these fancy 
shock holders for doing stuff. And you know what's funny is when you take your back tires off to do your shocks, right? You've already solved your own problem. What I like to do is like the tires that I remove, okay? Line them up on top of each other. Take your shock. Make sure it's completely, fully extended out and as far as that piston can come out, as far as you can go. Drop it ever so slightly and it's in right there. And there you go. You got yourself a shock holder. All right, now what you want to do is you're going to take your, your weight. And in this case, I'm going to be using the 78 here in the rear. And what you want to do is you just want to pour with some fluid in there. Fill it, I don't know, fill it about three quarters of the way, maybe less. Just, just enough to get in there. Get enough oil in there. You know, okay, so take it out. And ever so slightly, just very carefully, push the piston up. And you should hear that squeaky noise. That's that's normal. And what you're gonna be doing is you're, gonna, you're pushing all the air bubbles out of the piston. You know, get all that air is going out. And then just put some liquid back in there. And then replace the fluid with some more. Um, pull back out again and just push the air out of there. As you can see, when I push it up, and what you want to do is just let it push it up, just enough to where it gets, and look inside it, when you look down inside of it, you'll see in here air bubbles just being pushed out and pull that piston all the way down and push all the way up. Pull it all the way back down again. Grab your little makeshift shock holder. And just go pushing it all the way up and just do the process and do this, you know, over and over until you kind of get all the air bubbles out. And then what you want to do is when you don't hear any more and you pull all the way up and push all the way up again, you just want to look down the side and you'll just see these tiny little air bubbles. And you just keep pushing it up and down, like I said, and working all those air bubbles out of there. And you don't have to fill it all the way up either. I mean, all you have to do is just push the piston all the way up, push the piston all the way up, drop it in there like this, and then just fill it up to where just, just about three quarters of the way. Not very much. I mean, it doesn't need that much oil. Just fill it up just to where it's, and then once that's done, just what you want to do is you want to take your little shock, makeshift shock thing, and you have four tires, so you need, you know, you know, to, you know just do this shock by shock. And just take it fully extended out and then put it in your put it in there like this and just let it sit there for about I don't know uh, maybe about maybe about three minutes and about three or five minutes give it about three or five minutes and then pull the piston again and then check and see if there's any any air bubbles in there or anything like that if there is just let it sit for a little longer and just let it be there and then so I'm gonna let that sit there and um, while I'm going to not sit, I'm going to do the other shock as well. Alright, final, final run. Here we go. Let's, uh, sing this up really neat. Microphone set up. Alright, final run. Take one. Okay, so now, um, after we've completely put all of our fluid in and everything's good to go, all the air bubbles have been taken out, and stuff, I personally let mine sit for about 10 or 15 minutes. And then, um, now that we got all that done, now it comes to the, the, the uh, tricky part, now it's called rebound. And what rebound is, is that it's, the rebound is when your shock comes, it compresses up, I mean, through maybe a jump or anything, and then depresses. It's the amount of length that allows it to come back out. So, if you want, to have it come your, your rod come out like fully extended like you don't really worry about that you want to have it go three quarters um, three quarters in you want to go about halfway up so you want to bring the bring the thing about halfway um, yeah, about halfway up to the top there and that's about a half a half rebound right there and if you want to stay a three quarters rebound which I like to run a three quarter or a quarter rebound in the front of mine, uh, or in the back, anyway, especially in the back. But what we do is we'll have to go up just, just a quarter. So just move it up just a quarter, and then that's where you go. So when you have it up just like that, about a quarter, 
of the rebound, that's when you put your, you, sh you should have your bladder in there in the very top. So make sure it's all around, nice around the top there. And then take your top, your cap, and we're basically going to be doing the reverse process of taking it off. And make sure that you get the cap on the, on there, you to get the cap on there nice and flat. Um, and making sure that you don't damage the outside of the bladder. Um, with, so you just gotta kind of when you force it on there. And now, so if you have, also point out is if you have oil and you have oil over this place, it will be a little slicker and a little bit more easier for you to just to kind of hand tighten it at first. And you can just kind of get it started just by hand. That way you can reduce the no amount of using both tools. But that that, that is rebound. And you're gonna, and you're gonna have you're gonna have um, some leakage as well. Um, I have a little bit coming out right there, the top of mine. So I'm sure I get a little bit right there on the top, um, right there. So let's see if I can zoom in on that area. There you go. And then, so that's that's normal. And then all of a sudden, and then basically, um, just tighten it up as best you can. And then you're going to be putting the springs back on. Okay, so now we're going to be putting it back together. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that after you've tightened your the top of your shock mount very tight. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our spring. That's right here. And it doesn't really matter which way you put it on as long as it's a, it's a spring. So you just slide it on here like this until it pushes up and it pushes up inside the area here. It'll kind of push itself in there. And then what you want to do is you want to take, you want to de depress depress the screen uh, the spring as much as you can okay the spring and then then take your ring that you have here right you put your ring on there so it's in there nice and tight and then you take your cap so you get your cap and so the rings in there just the first thing that goes make sure that rings in there it's important and then take it and par push it far the spring far enough down to where you can get your piece on just just below the the metal or that plastic piece and then it should just slide right back in just like that okay and then take your, your ring that's around here take your ring and then you gotta work your ring back up and make sure when you work it up you work it up on the same place where you keep a hold of that spring in case you're wondering this thing on my elbow on my arm here I was a dialysis patient for five years so that's uh had to use that to keep me alive but I got a transplant a couple of months ago, which is nice after five years of doing dialysis. So kind of so got a lot of videos to catch up on doing. Get the springs back because it kind of starts hurting your hands. Okay. Now, all you gotta do really is, um, is the spring should auto if you got it lined up. The little lip and I'm talking about what I'm talking about is this thing right here. If you got that little tab part lined up perfectly with this part right here, okay, the the middle part right here, the middle crack in there, it should the spring should just push it up right on top of there, like that, and uh, just should be nice. So all of a sudden, your sp spring is nice and nice and good. So anyway, I'm gonna actually so the last part of this whole thing is going to be putting this back on your car, which is a little tricky process to do, but once you do it, you can get it done right. We're going to get our shocks back on our RC vehicle. So what you want to do is, first of all, you got to make sure and you got to look. There is actually a um, there's actually a uh, a ball bearing that's in the center of this right here. I'll just show you. And that has to be perfectly aligned to the the car itself lines up to the back here to where you're gonna be plugging in okay what we're looking at here is the holes to which the um the top the bottom of the, sh the shock is going to be put into now what i've been noticing is that there, there are two holes here there's one on the high side and one on the low side now these holes will determine whether the the, the height and the compression and decompression of the shock will be if you put it on the high side the 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 um the shock will tend to say have a have an angle, so that will make it more um, what's the word articulation will be more an issue, 
Um, and if you put on the low side, the one in here low, it will actually make the ride height more stiffer and um, the, the shocks will it take more for the shocks to compress and decompress than it would be. So that means it would take more of a punishment. So let's move on to um, choosing your hole, depending on which one you want to use. I myself, I'm going to choose the, the low side and we'll get we'll put that in there. Okay, what we want to start with is putting the actual shock here in the, the hole that you desire to you, you chose. So like I said, I chose the low, the low side. I'm going to put mine in there. Now the trick is, is to get your get it started with your screw that you have hopefully have put somewhere safe and didn't lose because these are crucial uh, and put it halfway in the hole there and then I like to come in come in from the angle this way and then work your way this way you'll see there's a little divot that goes and you can just sort of slide it into where you want to go I'm gonna take my Allen wrench here to kind of give me some some leverage to push the screw in forcibly if necessary, but hopefully not won't come to that. Before when I first started this last segment here, was there were two ways to do this. Um, and there was a right way and a wrong way. Now the wrong, there's actually three, I'm sorry. The, the, the beginning of the video, if you remember, I told you, you can take off these little things right here, but they're extremely hard to get to unless you have that ball point, uh, island wrench or Torx head. And the second way is to do it by popping the thing on, and so the, the, the shock is hanging from this direction right here. And the third way, which I'm doing, is to screw this in first, and then come over here and pop it on, because it is extremely difficult when this is popped on to compress this and wiggle this in. So if you notice, it's kind of hard to get it in there in the first place just by even having it free hang right there. Now imagine it being having to compress it with your hands at the same time trying to shove it in there and then get it quickly get the screw in there. That makes it extremely difficult. Now you want to make sure you don't do it too tight because you don't want to strip anything. Um, just get it enough to where it's nice and snug, a little resistance, and then you can come back through it later and you can fix whatever you like. Now here comes the fun part. Now. Um, is putting this this bad boy back on the thing and it's a little difficult what it needs to require me to do is I actually have to move this off this thing here okay so we're gonna do this we're gonna be putting this piece here this piece here on the top of the shot tower and to put it directly on there so what you do is you want to decompress it you just put it right on there and then you just want to try to get as much momentum as possible and just push it on there so you want to squeeze it and push it <clears throat> okay your shock is on so that is it um, and like I said I have the other one to do but that one's just pretty simple it's the same same it's the same process so again my name is Honda dash 84 this is my channel and I do look forward to your questions your comments below please subscribe and like and all that good stuff and show your support for my channel um it really does help it really does make me uh feel a lot better i know that people are out there that i'm helping and obviously i've been there before i've been in the situations where you need to look on youtube or look up something because you get so frustrated especially with nitro vehicles and so i really hope this really helped you and so signing off